Hello everybody, this is Chronic Inquiry, AKA Shauna, and I'm here to help you with another one of Try Hack Me's um, learning paths. This one is the Network Services Part One, and I've already got my attack box up and running, and I've already jumped down to section three. Whenever you see that green little icon, that means that there's a machine to start there. So I've already got it started up so we can whiz through this. I like to get through these as quickly as possible to show you how it's done so that you can have an aha moment that helps you understand what's going on. If you want a slower walkthrough, there are better videos out there for that. I'm gonna to try to get through this as quickly as possible for you. We're all connected and we're gonna go on to task number two and answer some of these questions. What does SMB stand for? Server message block. What type of protocol is SMB? The answer is response dash request. What do TCP clients connect to servers using? The answer is TCP slash IP. What systems does Samba run on? And that would be Unix systems because of course the SMB protocol um, would work on Windows 95, all Windows machines since Windows 95 as well. Okay, let's go on to enumerating the SMB. Again, make sure that you have your machine started and that you have an active IP address already up here because we're gonna need to be using that um, for the rest of this tutorial. Okay, let's go down here and see what it tells us to do. It says, first, we're gonna to have to conduct an Nmap scan of your choosing how many ports are open. I've seen different versions of network services where they kind of give you a little hint as to which one you should use. Um, this one that I'm in does not, so I've done a couple of Nmap scans for you and I found out the one that works best. So I'm gonna do Nmap, I'm going to do um, a SYN or stealth scan. I'm going to do it of top ports because if you just do it for the basic um, uh, first 1,000, um, it's not going to be enough for you. So I did it for the first 5,000. And then of course you need to put in the IP address of your machine. Mine again is up here and it is 10.10.18.120. Hit enter. This is going to take a few minutes. So I'll come back when it's done. Give yours more time. Up, oh, this one actually went pretty quickly today. So let's see if we can answer some of these questions here. So how many ports are open? The correct answer is three. And so again, if you've done an exhaustive enough scan, um, you'll be able to see those three ports. What ports is SMB running on? We know from our research, you should know from your research that NetBIOS and Microsoft DS are the SMB um, uh, hosts. So those are the answers. I put, uh, because of the slashes here, I did this wrong at first and I put 139 slash TCP, but no, they just want the two ports number. So the correct answer is 139 slash 445. And so now it wants us to get started with enum for Linux and it wants us to do a full basic enumeration. So how do we do that? It gives us a hint up here. We're gonna need to use the option dash A. So let's get started on that. And we just go enum for Linux, and we want to do the dash A, and then we do the IP address of our machine that we're trying to connect into and do enumeration on. And this takes a few moments because it's going to go through all the different passwords and users. So just give that a moment to get to the bottom. Um, while it's doing that, you can just scroll up on the side. You can't hit anything, but you can just kind of scroll up and we can get up here and we could start getting some basic information. So it's really good, easy to scan by looking at these headers um, that it gives you. So we'll start at the top and see what information that we have. Here we go. So the first question that it's asking us, what is the work group name? So let's go down to enumerating work group and it shows us that the domain workgroup name is workgroup. And what is the name of the machine? There's a lot of information, places where we can find this, but the first one up is um, this information for this IP address, and it shows that it is Polo SMB. Polo SMB is the correct answer. So let's see if we can find, it's asking us now for the operating system version. So let's just see what else is here in this enumeration. We can scan down and we have OS information on this machine IP. Again, it gives us the name for this machine. 
Polo SMB, and it shows right here the OS version is 6.1. So that's the answer here, 6.1. What share sticks out as something we might want to investigate? And by the way, as you're doing an enumeration, you're finding this information, you should be jotting it down in like a notepad or on a sticky note on something on your table to keep track of it because we're going to be using it in the next, um, the next sections. So we go down here and we see share enumeration. So, and let's see what's in here that might be interesting. Okay, so a lot of these are kind of like background admin things that um, it's not going to be too useful to us. But the thing that sticks out to me is the profiles share name um, and it's going to contain user profiles. That's going to be great because if there's anything that's not protected in there, maybe we can get a user profile and be able to get into this SMB um, system. So that's the answer there. It is profiles. All right, let's go down to task number four and let's start exploiting the SMB. Okay, first it's teaching us how to use the SMB client. And so it's asking us um, what the correct syntax would be to access an SMB share called secret as user suit on a machine with the IP 10.10.10.2 on the default port. So we would invoke the SMB client and then we'd have space forward slash forward slash 10.10.10.2 forward slash secret space dash capital U for user. The user's name is suit. And then we'd have dash P for the port that they want us to use. And we're going to be using 445. Okay. So now they want us to try this out on our own and see if we can get into a client. So now that this enumeration is done, I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. Here, I'm going to move this up for you guys so you can see it a little bit better. And we're going to try to get into this server ourselves, SMB client. And we're going to use forward slash forward slash and then use the IP that is correct for your machine. Mine is this. And I'm going to do um, forward slash profiles because that's the folder that we're trying to get into. And then we're going to use the user dash capital U as anonymous. Make sure your cases are correct because Linux is case sensitive. Hit enter. All right. It looks like it's possibly letting us in. It's asking for the password. We're just going to hit enter because we don't have one. And look right there. We are in. And so does the share allow anonymous access? So this particular share folder of profiles does allow anonymous access, yes. Okay, great, have a look around for any interesting documents. Who could we assume this profile folder belongs to? So now that we're in, um, remember back from your Linux fundamentals uh, pathway that to look around inside a directory, we push ls to list what's there. And look, we see this document working from home information.txt. I think that that's probably going to have a lot of useful information. So let's just start there. So you guys are probably thinking, oh, let's just cat. Since there's spaces, I'm going to use quotation marks because Linux um, doesn't like spaces in file names. And look what happens. Cat command not found. When we're in SMB, we can't use cat. So we're going to have to use the get function. So let's do get working from home information.txt. Okay, and it shows that it downloaded that file to my local machine directory. So I don't want to lose this information, so I'm going to keep this window over, open to the side, and I'm going to open another terminal. And so this is for my computer, because remember, this terminal is connected to the SMB client right now. So I want to look for a document that's on my machine. So I'm going to open another terminal over here and I'm going to hit LS for list what's there now. And I see that the document is there. So now that it's on my computer, I can read it by doing cat working from home information .txt. And we see a letter here. Let's read the letter and see what information that we get. So it's addressed to John Cactus. That helps us with our uh, first question here is who can we assume this profile folder belongs to? And it belongs to John Cactus. 
what service has been configured to allow him to work from home? So we're going to have to read what's in this letter. John Cactus, as you're well aware, due to the current pandemic, most of Polo Incorporated has insisted that wherever possible, employees should work from home. As such, your account has now been enabled with SSH access to the main server. So what does this tell us? This tells us, so what service has been configured? SSH. So this tells us that there might be a possibility that we can use SSH with his user credentials to connect to that main server. Okay, so now that we know this, let's go back to the SMB um, client that we're signed into. And we're looking all at everything else that's here. And it's asking us, now that we know all this information, what directory on the share should we look in? And look, we see that there's a directory called .ssh. So that one might even give us even more information. So I'm going to um, change directories and we're gonna try to get into .ssh and see what's here. Now that we're in it, you can see that it now has the extension of backslash dot ssh I'm going to list what's there and look so this directory contains authentication keys that allow a user to authenticate themselves on and then access a server which of these keys is most useful to us so from doing research um, on SMB clients you should know that ID underscore RSA is actually a fairly common um, uh, file name for that. So the answer over here is ID underscore RSA. They gave you a little hint too. So what is the default name of an SSH identity file? If you were to put this into Google, let's do that right now. And it shows you that ID RSA is the default file name of um, of an SSH identity file. So we have that one right there. So let's see, um, it says download this file to your local machine and change the permissions to 600 using change mod 600 and then the file name. All right, so let's perform these steps right now. So first what I need to do is I need to download this to my local machine. So again, we're gonna go get ID underscore RSA. I didn't need the quotations this time because there's no spaces. Hit enter and it's downloaded the file. So now I'm going to go back to the terminal that I have open for on my machine. I'm going to list what I see there and I see that it did in fact download that um, file. So now what I want to do is I want to see mod um, that file 600 I don't really know um, what this does so much I'm gonna have to research that later but for right now we can just follow the instructions that they give us and then the file name is RD RSA and hit enter all right and now that I have hit enter on that let's see if we can SSH into um, Let's see if we can do a secure connection back into that server. But first I need to get, because um, remember if we want to SSH, we've done this in a previous module, we would go SSH and we're going to use the, um, sorry, dash identity um, that is used, the identity authentication that is in this file. But then we need to have a username for the IP address. So let's go back to the enumeration. So back in this window, um, let me just scroll up to where we were doing the enumeration and let's see if we can find a username. Right down here at the bottom, it says enumerating users. And we see that there's this user called Cactus. And we know from that file that our guy's name is John Cactus. So I'm guessing that that is his actual username that we can use. So let's go back to our terminal. We're gonna to try to make an SSH connection, um, dash I, and then the file name, using the file name for the key of ID underscore RSA. And we're gonna go cactus at, and then we're gonna use the um, IP address of the machine that we're trying to connect to. 
And again, for me, it was 10.10.18.120, but yours, again, will be found up here. And let's see what we get. It says, are you sure you want to continue connecting for me? I'm going to hit yes. Warning permanently added to the list, and I'm in. Look at that. Okay, now that I'm in, let's see what we find here with LS. And we see that there is this document, smb.txt. And let's see if I can open it here from inside this um, folder. And there we go, we have our flag. And you can put your flag in right there. All right, so next up we have understanding Telnet. I'll clear out everything and I'll meet you right back.